All right, so here's Vinny. All right, this person's Vinny, okay? Vinny. And Vinny just moved into this new scene after purchasing it from the Matrix. And the problem Vinny has is that he is currently unable to move his boxes into their sorted regions. So he wants to move all these blue boxes into uh, this little enclosure for the blue boxes and the red boxes in the red region here. And Vinny has hired me to create a script for him that will let him pick these objects up and be able to move them into their specific regions. So to start off right now, we're first going to need to layer all of these uh, objects here into their own separate pickup layer. So we're going to take our, like, select all these objects here, all these boxes, and we're going to go to layer here and click on this to collapse it to see all of our layer options. And you'll see add layer. We're going to click on that and set our first user layer, the first one that is available for you, and name this pickup. And after that, we're going to select all of our cubes again and assign their layer to the pickup layer. All right. And for the next thing, we're going to need to create a hand object for Vinny. So Vinny doesn't have a hand object yet, and we're going to help him with this so he can actually pick the objects up. And make sure that in your character controller, that your hand object is a child of your main camera object. So like like this. And call this game object our hand. And what you're going to want to do is to be able to see how um, it would look when the player is holding an object. You could put like a temporary game object underneath. I'm going to put a sphere in. Actually no, I'm going to put a cube in to see what it looks like when Vinny tries to pick up his um, his boxes here. Okay, so these are on a scale of 0 0.75, 0 0.75. So I'm going to make this temporary cube into 0 0.75, 0 0.75, 0 0.75, and I'm going to move the hand object around while looking at the game view. Alright, so this is what the game view looks like. I'm going to move this down a bit to the right, and like that. Have it like this. Yeah, like that. This looks fine. Okay. All right. So when you're happy with um, what it, where like your hand's location based on like its positioning and how it would look like when the player picks up an object, you can get rid of the temporary cube and we can get to scripting. So in my scripts folder, I'm going to create a new class and I'm going to call this our pickup class, and we're going to assign it to Vinny here so he can pick up the objects, and we're going to go and edit it. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is start creating the main variables we'll need. So we can get rid of our start function, we don't really need that. And up top, above our update function, we're going to create a serialized field of camera and call this the player camera. And we're also going to create a serialized field of a float and call this our pickup range. Pickup range. There. And above all of these, we're going to create a layer mask a variable, a serialized field of private layer mask, and call this our pickup layer. There you go. And now with these variables, we can create the logic for picking up the, the cubes. So in our update method, we're first going to create a raycast. And this is what will help us in getting info on the object that we are trying to pick up. Yeah, also. Uh, the objects, all of these objects have a rigid body attached to them. Okay, so in our update method, we're going to create a ray, and we can call this our pickup ray. And since it's a first person controller, uh, I'm not going to use the mouse to pick up the objects, we're just going to use the camera's forward vector. So the pickup ray is going to be uh, a new ray of the player camera's transform position. And the direction will be the player camera's forward. So player camera that transformed up forward. With our pickup ray, we can now make do our raycast uh, physics dot raycast here. Physics dot raycast. What physics dot raycast here? There you go. And we're going to pass in our pickup ray as the first parameter. And for the second parameter, we're going to do an out raycast hit and call us our hit info so we can get the uh, any parameters of, of the other object like the rigid body and collider which is what we'll mainly need and we're going to put our pickup range as the max distance 
and the pickup layer as our layer mask. There you go. Now what we're going to do is create two variables underneath our three main ones and it's going to be a rigid body and a collider. So this rigid body we can call this our current object rigid body and we're going to create a private collider and call this our current object collider. And this is what we'll use to have a reference to uh, the object that we currently have selected so we can move it around and keep it at our hands position and rotation. So once we hit an object what we're going to do is check if we have a current object being held. So um, the rigid, the current object rigid body and the current object collider will be synchronous um, like uh, when they're being assigned so if there's a current object rigid body then there has to be a current object collider as if we click an object then we will assign both of these so uh, if we have one of these so if you have a current object rigid body then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to drop our current object rigid body and then assign it with the other uh, with uh, the new rigid body that we hit with our raycast but we're gonna first work on what happens when we click on an object and we do not have a current object rigid body so we're gonna work on our else statement first right here so this is if we do not have any item so when we don't have any item we simply just assign our variables here so we do current object rigid body equals hit info from our raycast function dot rigid body and our current object collider will be hit info dot collider there you go, you don't have to do any get component calls. The raycast hit struct has a reference to, to the other object's rigid body and collider, which is very useful. Alright, so there you go. And to prevent any weird behaviors, like, uh, for example, flying into the sky, like uh, prop flying in Half Life, what we can do is for any object that we're picking up, we can set the rig their rigid body to uh, is kinematic and their collider uh, disabled. So setting a rigid body to kinematic will um, remove that rigid body from any physics calculations. So make it exempt from any physics calculations that would normally happen to a non-kinematic rigid body. So what we're going to do is after we assign our collider and rigid body, we're going to uh, set our rigid body to is kinematic and we're going to disable our collider to prevent any like um, any glitching. So current object collider dot enabled equals false. And there you go. And we do not want to run this every frame. What we're going to do is every time we press a certain key. So I'm going to say every time we press the E key. So input dot get key down key code dot E. And we can run this logic within this if statement and there you go so now if we go back into unity and we assign our variables here so the pickup layer is the pickup layer right here and our, we have a reference to our main camera and we set our pickup range to something like 10 a pickup range of 10 and if we hit play I can go to these cubes here press E on them and you'll notice that it is no longer moving around right it's just frozen and I can walk through them so back in our class now we're going to handle with actually holding the object so this so in our update method after we do the check for whenever we press the E key we're going to check if we have a current object rigid body again so if current object rigid body then what we're going to do is set its transformed up position to our hand objects position and the rotation too so in our three main variables here we're going to create a reference to our hand so we're going to do a serialized field private transform and call this our hand and with this we can uh, assign our picked up objects transform position and rotation to our hands position and rotation so we can do current object rigid body dot uh, position equals hand dot position and current object rigid body dot rotation equals our hand dot rotation there so now anytime 
we press E on an object and we do not have a, uh, a current object that we're picking up, then we will have an object that will lock onto our hand like this. And there's quite some jitter, but we'll fix this later. And there you go. So that's how we can pick up objects. Now we need to be able to drop and throw objects. And whenever we press E on another object, we replace our current picked up object with that new object. So if we hit play again, go back into our class. And now we're going to go work in here. So what we want to do is we're going to set our current object rigid body to not kinematic and enable their collider and as soon as that is done with our new hit object we're going to set that to our current object rigid body and collider so what we're going to do is we can just copy this code here and put it up here but this time we're going to set is kinematic to false and enable to true and after that what we're going to do is reassign these to our hit info uh, our hit info's uh, collider and rigid body so we do current object rigid body equals hit info dot rigid body and current object collider equals hit info dot collider there and underneath this we can just copy this and put it underneath again so what happens is if we have a current object rigid body what we're going to do is set it uh, set um, set the current one uh, to be able to be calculated within the physics loop and enable its collider and after that we replace it with our newly hit object and with our new hit object we set it to kinematic and we set its collider to disabled there so now if we go back into unity and we go hit play and we press E on let's say a red cube there now I'm holding a red cube if I go to a blue cube here, I press E, you notice that it replaces it. You can see that I keep on dropping the red cube and I drop the blue cube. Alright, so now let's work on dropping objects and throwing them. So what we can do is if we press E and we do have a current object rigid body and we did not pick uh, hit any object then we can just simply drop it so we can kinda just copy this over move this down here and instead of having it a reference to our hit info what we can do is set this to null null there so basically if we do not hit an object with our raycast then what we're going to do is we're going to set uh, just reset our current picked up object and make sure when we do get an object then we hit return so we do not run this after we uh, hit an object and it runs this already now let's say we want to throw an object let's say we want to actually throw something so underneath this what we can do is do an if input dot get key down and I'm just going to use the uh, key Q. And what we can do is, since that uh, these objects here have rigid bodies, what we can do is we can apply a force to these uh, boxes. So it's very easy. So what we do is we first set them to, we first reset the cubes. So we can copy this code down here. And after we reset it, we're going to apply a force. So we do current object rigid body dot add force, and the force will be at our camera's forward vector. So uh, we do player camera dot transform dot forward. Copy that, move that down here, and we do force mode force dot impulse then it will throw the object but first we can create a variable uh, next to our pickup range and call this our throwing force and this will determine how far we will throw the object so we can multiply this by your throwing force and there you go so now if we go back into unity 
and we go to Vinny here and let's set them give them a throwing force of like five and we hit play we pick up a cube we press E and then press Q you notice that we throw the object there you go and when we pick it up and we press E we just drop it press Q to throw it and we can replace objects and there you go now Vinny can finally sort all of these cubes alright so some boxes were kind of lost in the void of existence uh, alright and that is all I have for this tutorial if uh, you learned something new then please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video goodbye